Good morning, friends. I'm glad you could be with me today as together we get into God's Word in the Unfolding the Word ministry. We began yesterday a new book study, working our way verse by verse through the book of Romans. I'm going to pick up our reading today in Romans chapter 1. I'm going to read verse 1, which began the verses that we started to unfold yesterday. Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. Yesterday we talked about a bit of the background of the book of Romans, the different ways in which God had been using over time the book of Romans in significant ways in the lives of key figures in history. We talked about the fact that within the book of Romans, we have the most extended sections dealing with the nature of salvation, the, the outgrowths of salvation in terms of individual lives, sanctification and what it means to grow as a disciple in a spirit-filled life manner, understanding how to live as new believers in Christ in the midst of a fallen world. So many things to be looking at, and Lord willing, we'll gradually get to them all as we begin day by day to work our way through that book. Today, starting out and beginning to unfold it, I want to look in this opening verse, verse 1, where Paul introduces himself to the Roman church. It wasn't that they didn't know who he was, but such an introduction was part and parcel of the way communication occurred in that era. And so Paul, in sending this letter, this epistle to the believers in Rome, tells some things about himself. He introduces himself in a way. Now, my question for you is this. If you were in a situation where you were having to communicate with some people you had not yet met personally, although perhaps they knew about you, how would you introduce yourself to them? What would you highlight in order to give them a sense of what made you tick, what drove you, who you were, how best to understand you? In these verses, we get an insight into how Paul did that, prompted by the Spirit of God. He defines himself in three distinctive ways here that help us to see how he saw himself. He describes himself as a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. He calls himself an apostle, and he calls himself as one set apart for the gospel itself, the gospel of God. What I'd like to do in these today and into tomorrow is talk about each of these three characteristics that Paul, under direction of the Holy Spirit, identifies for us as things that truly explain who Paul is, what makes him tick, what's driving his life. And let's begin with the first of them. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ. Paul begins this definitional process by saying, if you want to understand who I am, understand that I see myself first and foremost as a servant of of Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, this word servant, translated in the English Standard Version, which I just read to you, translates a Greek word, doulos. Now, the Greeks had a number of different words to describe slaves because the word slave actually was a general word that covered a number of specific sort of circumstantial situations. Some people were slaves because they had been defeated in war and taken off as part of the captives of a war and then were sold off to spend the rest of their lives in servitude of someone else. That's not the word used here. <laughs> Some people were simply kidnapped and turned into slaves, snatched. That's not the word used here either. Rather, this word doulos is primarily used in the, in the Greek era, and the writer of the New Testament, really God, but writing it through Paul, would have understood and chose this word because it would have been understood in this way by the readers. A doulos is someone who is a slave but willingly put themselves in the condition of servanthood 
of servitude. They made a choice to serve another person. Now, why in the world would somebody put themselves in the place of serving another that way, making a choice to be in a period of time of servitude? Well, lots of reasons could be true for that. Let's look at more recent history. One of the characteristics in the United States in its early years, back when it was a colony, uh, various colonies on the east coast of North America, many individuals made their way to the new land, to America, to a different colony, by being willing to be indentured servants. Now, what that phrase referred to is somebody said, listen, I, in exchange for you paying my my way to go across the ocean to get there, I will, I will promise to be working for you for nothing for a certain length of time, maybe a couple of years, maybe five years, whatever it was, but they were exchanging their labor for something that they needed, but they didn't have the money to get, indentured servanthood. And in a way, the doulos in the New Testament era was much like that. In exchange for something they simply couldn't get and didn't have the money to get, they were willing to trade off their labor to, in exchange for perhaps training, maybe in a profession, or in exchange for room and board in a period of time where there were no government uh, safety nets offering you food and lodging and so forth if you happen to be destitute. Maybe in some circumstances, uh, you needed protection and you could become a doulos of another and a more powerful individual and that person then protected you from others who would do you harm. There could have been a number of things driving the choice to be a doulos. The key is a doulos is somebody who accepted servitude for a period of time in exchange for something they really needed or really wanted, but couldn't get any other way. Paul says, I am a doulos. I am a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, I've not been forced into that position. I've not been captured in some sort of warfare, no longer have any rights any longer. No, I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to be his servant. What I find in him can be found no other way, and therefore I am his willing servant. I was thinking how reflective that is of the point in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19. Listen to these words. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own. You have been bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. <laughs> You've been bought with a price. <laughs> in a, you have determined that you're going to be serving the Lord in exchange for a price you could never pay. What was that? The price of the very sacrificed life of the perfect Son of God who died for you on the cross. God says, choose to be a doulos of me. In the way that Paul said, you don't understand me unless you see I'm a decided servant. <laughs> I determined to present my body in service of the king. Think of that in light of Romans 12, 1 and 2. It says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Present your body as a living sacrifice. Lord, here's my life. Here's my body. <laughs> I was bought with a price. Here it is. I want to glorify you with my life. I am going to present my body to you as a in a servant mentality. I want to serve you and fulfill your purpose. Paul says, if you want to know who I am and you want to understand me, you understand that I see myself as a willing servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. I have sold myself into, into servitude of the King of Kings. Is that how you see yourself? Tomorrow... I want to turn attention to the second of the characteristics that Paul gives of his own life. 
Then he says, I want you to also understand that I am an apostle. Join me tomorrow as we understand, unfold a bit more of what Paul meant with that descriptive word for his life. God bless.